Hello. And June the 10th be with you, young Padawans. It is I, Timothy Dunn, here. Please peep my Twitter handle. And if you happen to take any flattering screenshots of me at all, like any ones where I look handsome, I dare say, please tweet them to me as soon as possible. It is of grave importance. Hello, everyone. How's it going? It's me, Timothy Dunn. It's one to win. Come on in. Take out your contacts. Put on your glasses. Put on some comfy pants. Crack yourself open a nice Coke Zero. Why not? Treat yourself. Acting, Eugene says. Aha. Uh -huh. Little did you know. I was just acting. I have a full finger. It is Friday. It is June 10th, 2022. It is 4 p.m. Eastern time. And babe, it's time for the brain breaks. You know what I mean? There's like lots of stuff happening in the world right now. And you know, like a lot of it's like pretty important and you really should be paying attention to it right now. But you're also allowed to take breaks. You know what I mean? Like you're allowed to like take a little break, do something silly and fun just because you want to for no other reason. And you know, I hope we're able to be that little silly and fun something for you today. Hi PJ, how are you? I like silly and fun things just came from the shower. That sounds like an adult message that I shouldn't have read out loud, but guess what? We all shower. What can I say? I'm just feeling like a real joker today. You know, a real joker I am. And before this turns into Joker's Gone Wild, I should probably explain the rules of the game of One to Win Trivia to you. So here we go. In just a second, I'm going to be asking you 12 general knowledge trivia questions, and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to tap on the answer on the screen that you think is correct. If you guess wrong, like, no big deal. You can change your answer within the 10 second window. No, everyone showers, not just adults. I meant that sounded like the beginning of an innuendo. You know, you can change your answer within the 10 second window we give you though. The more questions you get right and the faster you do it, the closer you will be to winning our top prize today. And what about these prizes, Timothy? What is the price of happiness, I ask you? What is your price? That's up for you to decide. But today we're playing for a prize pot of 50 dang dollars. And we're going to split that three ways, 25 smackaroos to our first place winner, $15 for second place. And you guessed it, 10 bucks for third place. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That is how we do it. Oh, I am the prize. That's nice. No, I think you're all the prize. We're all winning. Happiness is the real prize, right? That's like kind of like a deep statement, but it's true. And remember, in this game, there are no eliminations and there is no penalty for guessing. So if you get a question wrong, you know, no big deal. You can just keep playing. Time is of the essence here because the prize will be awarded to players who get the most amount of questions right in the least amount of time. That makes sense, doesn't it? And speaking of exciting things, if you do really well today and end up in our top 10 winners circle, you will now be the happy new owner of some gorgeous little binocular friends. They're our first little power up and trust me, they really can make a difference. Uh, you know, and before you start blowing up my DMs, let me tell you that the binoculars give you a little peek in real time as to what everyone else is guessing to their answer on a particular question. You can only use your binoculars once though. So choose wisely. And now my friends, it is time to play. Let's just take a deep breath. Exhale, here we go. Focus, go with your guts. You know, uh, change your answer if you want within the 10 second window. Um, go in knowing that some of these you're not going to know the answer to, you know what I mean? So, uh, binoculars you can only use once in the game, I think I already said that, but for everyone who didn't have their listening ears on, just yet, welcome everyone! It takes all kinds and sometimes people need to be told twice. Just kidding, I love everyone, I'm happy everyone's here. Um, this is going to be a fun game, so before we get started, we have 95 Wonder Winners in the chat right now. Let's see what place you think you're going to forecast yourself in today. Someone's got to say number one. Someone's got to say number five. Go ahead and guess who thinks they're going to be number one today. I have to see some numbers in the chat to start the game. So we could be here all day if no one's going to play nice. 99, Angie says. BJ says 20. Last. I love how everyone truly goes for the worst possible scenario. 69, Alan. We know what that means. Toot toot. Gary said 37. Chris said 100. We have E. Bayan Eugene saying number one, and guess what? I believe Eugene's gonna do it today, and that's just the way I do. So let's go ahead and play uh, one. Oh my God, I almost said HQ trivia again. What is wrong with it? It's two weeks in a row. I've almost said HQ, but we're not playing HQ. We're playing one to win. Okay, so like, let's let's have fun. Here we go. Question one. Question one. Good luck, everybody. Question one. 
putting your phone in which of these is said to help repair water damage? Is it lava, more water, or rice? You ever got your phone wet? Yeah, I have too. We love a good hack here at One to Win. So let's start with this. The let's start the game with possibly the oldest trick in the book. Here we go. Spoiler alert: throwing your phone back into the water that damaged it won't do the trick. Neither will heading to your nearest volcano, though I have never personally done that. So if you have thrown your phone into a volcano, please let us know in the chat. I have more questions for you. That can only mean that you could try the super absorbent properties of rice for your wet phone, which by the way, doesn't work. I mean, like it has for me, but it's not like a foolproof way. If you drop your phone in water, turn it off immediately and take it to a repair shop. But it does work as the answer for Q1, my friends, and 86 Wonder Winners will want to keep a firm grip on their phones today because how else can you carry on a perfect streak in today's quiz? How about that, right? Time to call up question two. Here we go, question two. Here we go. What name is given to a deliberately hidden feature of a video game? Is it birthday cake, Christmas cracker, or Easter egg? a deliberately hidden feature of a video game. That's time right there. Now, despite what you may have seen in Ready Player One, these little features date back to the 1973 game, Moonlander, in which landing in exactly the right place would cause your character to go and grab some McDonald's. How about that? Now, these are just fun little things to discover, just like the prizes in an Easter egg hunt. That's right, Easter egg is what I hope you said. 89 Wonder Winners, already another step closer to discovering one of today's top prizes, I'm talking about cheddar. Great work. Two of you thought birthday cake. You know what? I love birthday cake, so I can't really fault you for that. Let's move on to Q3. Q3, something I love to talk about. Q3, here we go. Tex-Mex is a fusion of cuisines from which continent? Is it Africa, Europe, or North America? Tex-Mex. That's time right there. Now, Tex-Mex has given us some incredibly tasty food inspired by the classic dishes of Mexico, along with influences from just over the border in the U.S. of A, baby. Where can you find Mexico in the USA? I hear you ask. In North America, I say to you, it's as easy as that. North America, the one we were looking for, and 92 of you are cooking up a storm here. Do you love these little puns? I kind of love puns. What will Q4 bring, I ask? There's only one way to find out. So here it is, Q4, let's go. Q4, released in cinemas last month. What is the subtitle for the latest Top Gun film? Is it Goose, Iceman, or Maverick? That's time right there. Now we'll keep things spoiler free, but this sequel to the 1986 original has been really getting rave reviews. I've heard a lot of people crying in the theaters. A lot of like bros have been tweeting that they're crying and they have a 99% score on Rotten Tomatoes. That's amazing. Now all three of the options are Top Gun characters, but the sequel is named after Tom Cruise's character, Captain Mitchell, better known as Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. So of course the film is called Top Gun Goose. Just kidding. No, it's not. Maverick is the answer we're looking for. And 90 of you are proving yourselves to be anything but airheads. Because you got that one absolutely right, baby. Two of you thought it was Iceman. One of you thought it was Goose. Top Gun Goose. That's what you thought it was? Okay. I mean, <laughs> they can name things anything. So I guess anything's a fine answer, but it's wrong. Let's move on to Q5. Q5. Here we go. Q5. How many people normally go on a double date? Is it two, four, or eight? How many people normally go on a double date? That's time right there. Uh-oh, let's hope you didn't slip up here on this one. Double means two. But here, that means two couples. There are two people in a couple. Two times two giving you four. Four is the answer you're looking for. Advanced arithmetic for the advanced people. Did we get you on that one? I mean, we definitely didn't catch 85 of you out there. Well done, 85 of you. Six of you thought eight, five of you thought two. You know what? It's just math. No big deal. If you're going on a double date, a triple date would also be six people. So just do multiples of two. And you know what? Let's move on to Q6 because math hurts my brain. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? On a Friday, end of the week, math? Are you kidding me? What am I made out of? So what am I, a robot? What am I, a Macintosh computer? No, I'm a human man. Q6, here we go, Q6. Q6, which of these is the closest modern synonym 
of the word sapphic? Is it gay, lesbian, or transgender? The closest modern synonym of the word sapphic. That's time right there. Happy Pride, everybody. To all the gay, lesbian, transgender, sapphic, whatever, LGBTQ+. Plus. All of the pluses, I want to say. Happy Pride. And happy Pride to all of our allies out there. I see that some of the straight folks in our chat knew this answer. Thanks to all of our allies. Happy Pride to you. Now, the word sapphic came into being because of Sappho, a poet who lived in ancient Greece on the island of Lesbos. She would write extensively about her adoration of women, so she's thought to be the first lesbian in history. Now, originally, sapphic meant women who love women, just in like a more generic sense, but now it means more specifically lesbian, which itself was derived from Lesbos, the name of the island that Sappho lived on. Lesbian is the answer it always is. If you have a question, ask a lesbian or guess the answer is lesbian because lesbians are the answer. It looks like we have 32 or it looks like 63 wordsmiths in the game today getting that one right. 12 of you thought it was gay and 17 thought transgender, regardless of what you guessed. Let's see some pride flags in the chat. Can we get some pride flags and some rainbows in that chat? If you have enough dexterity with your thumbs to put rainbow hearts in there, like I see uh, Mr. Vickers did in there, we appreciate you. Yeah, we have it's sapphic. It actually still encompasses all of the attraction, and that's amazing. Happy pride, everybody. Oh, we see some pride flags. I love it. We're moving on to Q7. No, Q7. Here we go. Q7 in a popular cartoon series. Who are Cosmo and Wanda? Are they the Backyardigans? Are they the Fairly Odd Parents? Or are they the Powerpuff Girls? Cosmo and Wanda, three cartoons from around the early aughties, noughties. But where will you find Cosmo and Wanda, he asks you. Well, you won't find them in Townsville with the Powerpuff Girls. Those chicks are Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Everyone knows that, come on. Neither can you head into your backyard because the Backyardigans are named Uniqua, Pablo, Tyrone, Tasha, and Austin. And they're actually known for granting 10-year-old Timmy Turner's wishes. And perhaps today, old Timmy Dunny, that's me, will be granting your wishes, but only if you chose Fairly Odd Parents. 79, you got your wishes granted. Poof, your wish is my command. And perhaps your kids made you watch them. Who knows? People are allowed to watch cartoons. Adults, too. Why not? You want to go to Q8? Q8, come in. Here we go. Here's Q8. Q8. If you write out the alphabet repeatedly, starting from A, what is the 50th letter you'd write? All right, Q8, here we go. Q8. If you write out the alphabet starting from A, what is the 50th letter you would write? Is it X, Y, or Z? The question's there, everybody. It took a little lag. Here it is. Don't freak out. We'll fix it. That's time right there. Ah, bye. It appeared. But it appeared all too late. Did you have time, I asked. Math, more math on a Friday? Come on, Tim. But I know you love it deep inside, huh? Oh, hold on. Here we go. Uh, you don't need to quickly count on your fingers to work this one out. There are 26 letters of the alphabet. So the 27th letter you write would be A, right? So now two full al alphabets are two lots of 26 letters which makes 52, right? Now the 52nd letter is Z. The 51st is Y. That makes the 50th letter you write. Well, that would be X. And X marks the spot for 53 one to winners who didn't crack under the pressure. They're amazing math skills for any day of the week, let alone a Friday. Let's hit the books for Q9 though. Q9, we have another fun one. Q9, which of these is not a position in this game? Beater, bludger, or chaser? That's time right there. Now, Potterheads, your time has come. Sweet, sweet Potterheads. The sport we're talking about here is Quidditch. And it's even played in real life now, if you can believe that. Ain't nerds amazing? Ain't nerds just amazing? I love it. And now, a game involves two teams of seven people playing four positions, one keeper, one seeker, two beaters, and three... Chasers. A bludger is one of the three types of ball, along with the quaffle and the golden snitch, because of course it is, right? Bludger was what we were looking for, and 54 of you managed to find platform nine and three quarters. 
and are heading for victory today. 27 guest beater, 11 guest chaser. I thought that was rugby, someone says. Oh, uh, here we go. thought it was rugby, too. But it was Quidditch, everybody. Rise up rugby heads. Didn't appear. Uh, do you know what's funny? I love that I'm not... Oh, country, country Karen's not one to mess with in the chat. <laughs> There's a little technical delay, everybody. So everyone could just be cool. Um, has anyone gone any, on any fun vacations lately? Like to any interesting towns? You can chat in the chat. <laughs> was that dodgeball? No, it was Quidditch, everybody. There's some... Let's, you know, let's see some more rainbow flags in the chat. Why not? I mean, I will say that there's some funny, you know, comebacks in the chat. Sometimes you have to do a little crowd. You have to do a little crowd control. You know what I mean? When something's free and open to the public, the public really can show up. So sometimes it takes a little fine tuning. And that's all. We're going to get 100 Wonder Winners playing. Nothing wrong with that. Is it anyone's birthday? Do we have any birthdays to celebrate in the chat now? How about now? Oh, country Karen, don't say those words in the chat. Be nice. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Q10 coming up now. Q10, everybody. Thanks for all of your patience. We appreciate you rolling with it here. We're all doing our best. We're just trying to have a nice little time, you know? So everyone put on your good attitude hats and let's have some fun. Here we go. Happy early birthday to E.G. Vickers, too, in the chat right there. That's right. Happy birthday to my, my birthday twin as well. Here we go. Q10. Moving on to Q10. Q10. Which of these is the shortest serving current leader of a G7 country? Oh, it's a picture question. These are tough. That sign right there. The Group of Seven, better known as the G7, is a political group consisting of the U.S., the U.K., Japan, Italy, Germany, Canada, and France. Let's start with the guy in the bottom left here. Now, that's Justin Trudeau. He's been Canada's prime minister since November 2015, making him the longest serving one here. So it's, you know, not him. Uh, we jump forward to 20, May 2017, where Emmanuel Macron, the bottom right, became the president of France. So it's not that one either. So it boils down now to Mario Draghi versus Anthony Albanese. But of the two, Anthony Albanese took office first. But Australia isn't in the G7. That means that Italy's prime minister since 2021, Mario Draghi, was with who we were after here. And after Q10, let's see how many winners we got. 18 Wonder Winners getting that one right there. And it looks like we have our first Stumpy. I mean, this one was a tough, a Stumpy. Uh, I do see someone in the chat say Trudeau, uh, Trudeau is legit hot. And I would just have to uh, agree. You know what I mean? Uh, but that's a Stumpy or a Stumpy. Congratulations to everyone who guessed Trudeau, even though he was not the answer we were looking for. You know, why not? Uh, Q11 is a fun one. Let's move on to Q Q11 and see how we're doing. Q11, here we go. In Apple's upcoming iOS 16 release, which of these will be displayed at the bottom of the screen instead of at the top? Is it incoming notifications, the search box, or your battery percentage? That's time right there. Barely got the answers out. No, Apple's Worldwide Developer Developers Conference was held this week, and it wasn't short of announcements, including the new MacBook Air. And finally... The ability to edit iMessages after you've sent them. Hotly controversial. Hopefully Twitter can catch up next, though I'm not sure. I sort of think you should watch what you say the first time around. You know what I mean? And anyway, which of these, perhaps, perhaps more cosmetic, stalwarts of the top of the screen is set to make its way to the bottom, you ask? Stacking themselves up in the bottom and allowing you to see them more than one at a time. That would be your... Incoming notifications, that's what we wanted. And 40 of you are one step closer to being able to buy something they announced at the conference. 41 to winners guessed incoming notifications, 26 guessed the search box, and 25 guessed your battery percentage. And I'm going to say just one thing. It's not worth, like, squabbling in the chat. You know what I mean? If you're feeling like something's going on, you can just ignore it. You know what I mean? You don't have to. Participate. That's a choice you make. 
that's what I'm going to say on that. We're having a fun game. It's all, it's for free. It's a Friday. It's pride. I'm feeling good. I got a little haircut. It's a little shorter. We're feeling good. And I have the pleasure of letting you know we've reached our 12th question, Q12, final Q of the do. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. Q12, which of these words cannot be correctly filled in using the rule I before E except after C? Tap on the one that you think that cannot be correctly filled in using I before E except after C. That's time right there. That's the game. Now, the words we're looking at here are grief, receive, and weird. Grief is spelled G-R-I-E-F, and the I-E doesn't come after, or it doesn't come before a C. I'm getting confused. Doesn't come before a C, so that does follow the rule, and, you know, that's not the answer we're looking for. Now, how about the word receive? Now, that is spelled R-E-C-E-I-V-E. -E. The I doesn't come before the E, but they come after a C. So that also follows the rule. Still with me? Okay, here we go. That can only leave weird, which doesn't have the I before E, and there's no C in sight, meaning that's the one we were after. Weird was the answer. 48 of you know your I's, C's, and E's, and I'll C's you by the C, I guess. You see what I did there? Isn't that fun? 48 Wonder Winners were weird all the way through and through. 29 got thought receive, and 14 thought grief. And I'll tell you, I'm not really good at these. So that's our game. That's Q12, 114 Wonder Winners playing right now. And now it's my favorite time where I guess how you think you did today. Did you come in 115th? Did you come in second or third? Everyone, let's jump in there and see what place you came in. Maybe I finished 12th best Ken ever said. Uh, I'm not a 20, so I'm a 77. There you go. Oh, we love a three. Top 30. We have a 10. That, oh, I hope you got a 10. 11th, 117, you know, not feeling too hot. Rose said 55, and Ockel Express said 55 as well. And that's what I like to say is serendipity. Two people guessing the exact same number. So let's go ahead and announce who actually wins. Dun, da, da, da. Congratulations to our winners today. Snowed in with 12 correct answers in 53.32 seconds. Congratulations, Snowed in. You're taking home our top prize today. 25 smackaroos coming your way off the wall, coming in second place with 11 correct answers in 34.78 seconds. You're walking out here with 15 dang dollars and in third place. Uh, Jefe es Dios. I've seen that name before. 11 correct answers in 36.43 seconds. Congratulations to our top three. Congratulations to our top 10. And, you know, congratulations to everyone who's playing. You know, have fun. Play a game. Happy Pride, everyone. That's it. That's how we play one to win trivia. You know, congrats to all the winners. If you didn't win this time, I have great news. We'll be back next week doing the exact same thing. Uh, you know, so tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. As always, I hope you had a fun time. And if you did, maybe, you know, do something nice for someone in your life. Because joy is not meant to be kept. Joy is meant to be shared. I've been Timothy Dunn this whole dang time. Thanks for playing. Find me over on Twitter.com and say hello. And if anyone, if no one has told you this yet today, I love you. And I'll see you all guys later. Have a great weekend. See you later. Bye.